Hello and welcome to Piano TV. Today we are going to talk about sight reading because you should do it. It's awesome, it's important, you need to sight read. So basically sight reading is the ability to sit down and just play a piece of music without a whole lot of forethought or afterthought. It's kind of like when you practice a song, that's kind of like studying a textbook. Whereas when you sight read, it's kind of like reading a novel. You don't really dwell on it in the same way. So. It's going along the, the book theme here. Reading words is a lot like reading music, right? So when you're learning how to read words, the more words you read, the better you're going to get at reading words and then sentences and then books. And the same is true with music. The more music you read, the better you're going to get at reading music. It's mind blowing, I know. So what I find happens a lot, here's an example. So say you start learning three songs, three new songs, and they're moderate difficulty for your level, so it's gonna take you about a month to get really good at them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna spend the first week learning how to play the notes by reading it, but then the next three weeks, you're gonna spend getting better at the music and you're not really reading it anymore. You're not really spending effort to read, you're more spending effort to develop your technique or whatever else needs, needs to be happening for your piece. So so not a lot of time comparatively gets spent on sight reading for most people who play piano. So most of us don't have the resources to build a huge sight reading library. Resources, I mean moolah, I mean cash dollar bills. So I'm going to give you some online resources that I use, uh, but we'll get to that in, in a little bit. So the main benefit of sight reading, wait for it, it's awesome and mind-blowing, is that it'll make you better at reading music. Who would have thought? It also has the benefit of taking the fear out of learning a new piece, which probably sounds very silly, but me personally, I've gone through periods in my life where I'm pretty afraid of learning new material, so I just avoid it entirely. Now, it's not a fear of the music itself. It's more of like a fear of the work involved in reading a new song. So when you're sight reading every day, it, it makes it so that it's not this like, reading is this giant, huge, pain in the behind where it makes it more accessible because you do it all the time so what's what's that strange about it and it actually by doing it every day it makes it really fun at least i find it fun you you'd find it fun too i'm gonna i'm just gonna call it right now and along those lines sight reading on a regular basis has the benefit of getting you more intimate with more music because you're just you're reading more music so you know you might only decide to master one chopin waltz but by playing through the whole book of his waltzes, you're gonna become more intimate with his music than you would be if you were to just listen to a recording of the waltzes. So now I'm gonna share a few pointers with you for your sight reading journey. And the most important thing is to pick music that's well within your level, maybe even a few steps below your level. You wanna pick pieces that you can, you can sit down and play, even if it's not up to tempo. But the point isn't to struggle, it's to practice fluidity. So keep that in mind. Sight read music every single day even if it's just for like the tiniest fraction of your practice session so say you practice for half an hour a day even just sight reading for two minutes is so beneficial it might not even be a whole piece it might just be like a line or two of music but anything counts and I mean you can always do more but the important part is to establish a daily habit go really really slow it's important to play I keep saying the word important and I keep being like really self-conscious about the way I say it. important important it's very important to sight read at a tempo that you can manage that you can play the whole thing through at a steady tempo while still being able to do things like the dynamics it's it's way better to play a song through at a snail's pace, but accurately, than to like, uh, uh, like constantly stopping and starting, like a bad vehicle that can't drive, like someone who doesn't know how to drive standard, like that. Try to avoid overdoing it. As soon as you feel like your mental focus is starting to starting to wane, just just put the book away, do something else. Continually attempt new material. It doesn't challenge your brain to just read pieces that you've read a million times before. So switch it up and keep it fresh. If you have a tablet, they are the most useful thing in the world for sight reading because you can just load something up on the internet and then prop the tablet on the music stand and just go for it without having any needing to print up any sheet music or anything like that. So very, very useful. And as a final word of advice for sight reading, I would be remiss if I were not to mention to have fun, which is basically my mantra at this point, but it's important. Like, there I go again with the word important, bah! Okay, 
Like I said before, with the fear of the reading the mu new music and l being all afraid of reading notes, now that I do it every day, I'm not afraid of it anymore and I find it really fun. It's actually, in all honesty, it's one of my favorite parts of my practice sessions now. So give it a try and have fun with it. You can find a lot of great sheet music online to sight read for free, and I said that already, but also legally at websites like imslp.org, which have a huge collection. Um, the hardest part though, is finding sheet music that's level appropriate, especially if you're a beginner, you're just starting out, you don't really know like what pieces are, are doable at that level because there's not a lot, but I'll list some of my favorites and I'll link them below. So starting with Cherny, he has a whole bunch of stuff at a beginner level that you can read through. And I'll talk more about Carl Cherny in the next video, actually sort of controversial stuff, but I really like his little pieces. I really like his hundred recreations, 50 short pieces for beginners, etc. He's got a lot of material. So I'll link that below. Bella Bartok is another composer with a lot of good beginner material, except don't be fooled by some of his books, which are called for children, which makes it sound like they're really easy, but actually they're not, and some of the pieces are pretty difficult. One collection of his that is doable for a beginner, though, is called Microcosmos, and it's six volumes. It's a ton of music, and it works in progressing order of difficulty, so it's good for beginners. The important thing to note here, though, I just gotta say this, Bartok's music is legal to view online if you're in Canada, but if you're in the States, it is not Always respect the copyright laws of your country. Turk's got a collection online called something like 120 Pieces for the Beginning Piano Player, something like that, it's a long title. And I would say the first dozen or so are at a beginner level. They get pretty difficult pretty fast, but that's another one to check out. Wolfgang Mozart's dad, Leopold, made a collection of pieces called Nannerl's Music Book. It was just to teach Mozart's sister, Nenerl, how to play piano with this collection of books. And there's some like sort of beginner level pieces. I would probably wait until you're pretty comfortable with reading notes before getting into this one because it's not super easy, but there's a lot of good songs in that collection. And as always, well, I don't know if this is as always, but let Google be your friend. You can always do internet searches for, you know, like, beginner sheet music and things like that to, to see what you can find. So I hope you found today's video useful, but now get sight reading, go to it. And without further ado, thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel and like and visit the website, pianotv.net. Goodbye. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. I wanted to feel like a lion.